So an election took place. An election took place in Great Britain. That's right, folks. The island of Great Britain had an election. And everyone was rather surprised at how things turned out. Now, of course, there's no such thing as, you know, a, a perfect system. It isn't. But there was a major upset that took place there. So let's go ahead and at least play a reaction of a Sky News anchor's embarrassing reaction to the exit poll results. Goodness gracious, Cretaceous, what happened? People in Britain, to our British audience, what is going on? Oh, oh. oh my God. Oh. <laughs> So, so, sounds like somebody's struggling to have a little bit of an O experience. Go ahead, lady. Say it again. Yeah, I'm go you can see from his oh, face wow. in just a second. You can see That's... how Andy has. One more time, lady. One more time. One more time for the people. We got we, we got to hear that moaning one more time. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, I'm go you can see from his oh, face wow. in just a second. You can see That's how Andy has reacted. Brilliant. Hey, was she faking it? Type one for no, kid. That was authentic. This, the spot was hit. Type two, nah, man, she's faking it. <laughs> so it turns out that um, Reese uh, Sunak, who is the uh, British Prime Minister, I probably said his name wrong, but uh, that that doesn't matter because if you want to see somebody laugh, every if you if you want to laugh at somebody who's at absolute failure right now, peak failure, it's this guy right here. So let's go ahead and pull up this video here because a YouTuber. Uh, Nico Om Omlana holds up the letter L right behind him, which is absolute pure gold. This is pure gold. I'd also like to thank the police who have ensured that we can conduct this ballot here in North Yorkshire, but also across the country in safety. On this difficult night, I'd like to express my gratitude to the people of the Richmond and North Allerton constituency. Notice how the camera has to move out of the way. Just so, or zoom in so that they don't see the L right behind them. For your continued support. Since yes! Moved here a decade Come on, ago, lower! Lower, buddy! My family lower! Feel so at home. And I look forward to continuing to serve as your member of parliament. It is an enormous privilege. I'm grateful to my agent and constituency team. And I congratulate my opponents here on the yes! energetic and very good-natured campaign. Yes, hold on. Hold on. By the way... Yes, my friends, that is Lord Buckethead right there. That is Lord Buckethead up there, which is which which is absolutely beautiful. I, I I for one recognize his game and the king salutes Lord Buckethead. All right. There you go. <laughs> you know, I said a 2024 was going to be a great election year. I, I wasn't also expecting to impact the people of Great Britain. If 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 my wish impacted your election, I'm 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 so sorry. Well, not really that much, you know. But there's some good to take from this. First of all, uh, let's pull up this article here from the British Prime Minister, as he concedes a sobering defeat. So the British Prime Minister has apologized to his Conservative colleagues who lost their seats. So in other words, in other words, this is probably how all of them were reacting when they lost. <laughs> Oh, oh. oh my God! Oh. <laughs> oh. oh Jesus, lady, calm down, calm down, indeed. Just behave. Oh, oh, she's moaning out there, moan like a banshee. But who doesn't love that, right? Uh, the Labour Party has won this general election. The British people have delivered a sobering verdict tonight. Uh, Sunak said in a speech lasting less than two minutes on Friday morning as exit polls and early results projected the opposition had won more than 400 out of 650 seats in Parliament. Uh, the British Prime Minister refused to answer questions but indicated that he would not step down as MP, promising his North Yorkshire constituents that he would continue to serve as your member of Parliament, spending more time with them in the weeks, months, and years to come. Oh, but he's sad. But you want to know what's interesting? Jeremy Corbyn won. 
He ran as an independent. He was not associated with the Labor Party <clears throat> because I think it's important for us to remember that the Labor Party ousted Jeremy Corbyn because the Labor Party, one can argue, is almost like a click, copy, paste version of the Democratic Party. Dare I say it. Let's play this video of Jeremy Corbyn announcing his victory. Our campaign did not get into the gutter of politics, as is too often happening in this country. Ours is a positive campaign trying to bring hope to people who are in housing stress, who are homeless, who are going through mental health difficulties, who are worried about their future. And the political system has to produce answers to those concerns and those worries. Demonizing refugees, demonizing people from other countries won't solve those problems. The only way we solve the problems of our community is by uniting our communities. And our campaign was utterly determined to bring that degree of unity to it. And so this result is, to me, a resounding message from the people of Islington North that they want something different, they want something better, and in the new government that's coming in, they're looking for an end to things like the two-child benefit policy cap. They're looking, looking for regulation of the private rented sector. And if I may say so, they're also looking for a government that on the world stage will search for peace, not war, and not allow the terrible conditions to go on that are happening in Gaza at the present time. So this was a grassroots campaign, a grassroots campaign that isn't going to disappear, isn't going to go away. It's brought together people from all walks of life, from all ethnic communities, from all languages and all ages in a determination to see, get something better in our society. My job in Parliament will be, as it's always been, to deal with the individual problems that many of our people face, but to speak up to speak up where necessary in criticism in order to bring about the social changes that this country needs and my constituency needs. And I'm humbled and proud and very grateful to the people of Islington North who I've represented for so long and have taught me so much. I owe my life and my learning and my abilities entirely to the people of Islington North. This victory is a dedication to them and steadfastness in the face of opposition, steadfastness in the face of abuse, we have shown what kinder, gentler, more sensible. More okay, first of all, to my audience, why are you so mean? We're listening to this speech, and you guys are saying Mick Foley's right behind Jeremy Corbyn. All right, it's Cactus Jack. Bang, bang. Uh, no, that's not Mick Foley. It would be funny if it was, but it's not Mick Foley, okay? It's not. It's not. I'm sorry. It's not Mick Foley. Everyone needs to calm down. Everyone needs to calm down. Miss Witchy Perfect, calm down. Everybody's saying that's Mick Foley. That ain't Mick Foley. Stop that, all of you. More inclusive politics can bring about. I couldn't be more proud of my constituency than I am tonight. I'm proud of our team that brought this result. Thank you very much, Islington North, for the result that we've achieved tonight. Thank you. So that's what happened. But, unfortunately, there was some a little bit of unfortunate news. George Galloway loses Rockdale seat to Labor's uh, Paul Way. Right. So uh, George Galloway has been removed from Parliament after a four month stint as MP for Rockdale, losing his seat to Labor by 1,400 votes because uh, a lot of people were very upset, including the British prime minister at the time. Uh, who was very upset at George Galloway winning that election in February. We talked about it. It was a major event. Uh, Galloway took the seat from his Workers' Party uh, for his Workers' Party in February by election dominated by the conflict in Gaza, did not attend the announcement at which it was announced that the former political journalist Paul Way had won the seat for Labour. Uh, he won about 13,000 votes, almost half the total won by the late Labour MP uh, Tony Lloyd in 2019. Lloyd's death prompted the by-election that Galloway won. Galloway took 11,600 votes with Reform UK, beating the Conservatives into fourth. Uh, Way began his victory speech by saying, with some apparent irony, I'd like to thank George Galloway for his service. This was followed by shouts and heckles from the crowd. Are we going to be allowed to speak? Is this democracy? Wade then said, 
Um, the new MP went on to thank local voters, saying that they made Rockdale part of a national wave of change. In a post on X, Galloway thanked the people in his constituency who gave me 54 sitting days in the last parliament as their MP. We took the government party to within 1,500 votes and served notice on labor that we are here to stay in Rockdale. So we'll see what happens. Maybe George uh, Galloway will come back. But unfortunately, as it stands, there were some victories and some losses. Jeremy Corbyn managed to win as an independent, not associated with labor, uh, with the labor party to be more precise. Uh, but also it's the downfall of the conservative movement in Britain. And when you have epic moments like this, where the prime minister, can you imagine if somebody did this to Biden? Can you imagine if somebody did this to Trump? This would be pure gold. I'd also like to that right there, that right there, forever to say in world history. But then on top of that, when you have this lineup of people, Lord Buckethead, that man holding the L, and a lady holding a puppet, I believe, it's quite clear to me that this election cycle is going international. But I do hope. For me being a little bit petty here, I do I do wish the people of the UK all the best for your new government, you know, but expecting a government to be responsible for the people, that's like also hoping that you're gonna win the lottery every day, all the time, and that just ain't gonna happen, okay? Like it's just it's just, it just ain't gonna happen. But I am ever hopeful, I will say this, that on our election night in November, maybe we'll get something better than this. Oh, oh, oh my god. Oh, 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 oh. Are you okay there, lady? Do you need a cigarette? Always remember, always remember here, folks, that these elections that we're going to be seeing taking place not only here in the United States but worldwide, it is going to be a reaction to the neoliberal policies that we're seeing. Now, in all truth, the real power remains with the people. And so long as people still fight and push back and still make sure their voices are heard, we're still in the game. But I don't know how this election, especially in the UK, will play out, whether or not there'll be a new one or whether or not the government can be able to be pushed forward. But at least the people of Britain chose, and this is what they have now. So all the best to them for their future endeavors. Now we got to focus back onto our election. I hope it's just as spicy as this as as what we saw in the UK. That would be awesome.